Hello, today I would like to extend our discussion of the simple machine motion study of a wedge. If you haven't seen the first part of that, I suggest you look at that first before proceeding here. If you remember, we were looking at raising a, uh, a nut, this is the nut, using a wedge. So it's a simple machine. And when we're raising and moving, we can see that the mechanical advantage to raise is the output force divided by the input force. And that's a function of the coefficient of friction, F, and the tangent of the lead angle or the wedge angle, lambda. If you remember, the efficiency makes sense here because our output force, F, is opposing the displacement uh, of the nut. So that's our output work would be F times D naught. Our input work is where the input force is in the direction of the input displacement. So efficiency makes sense here. And this is where, in our example to raise, we have F times tangent of lambda uh, being less than 1, so that the mechanical advantage is positive and um, it uh, makes sense. When you have an abnormal wedge, what's happening is this product is causing the mechanical advantage to actually go negative, and that's uh, quite a bit quirky. And really, the efficiency in this sense uh, doesn't make sense. And the reason is, is with the mechanical advantage being negative, you really have to flip the direction of the force on your output or on the nut. And you actually have to help the nut up because there's so much friction you'd have to help the nut up while you're pushing in on the wedge. So really, to be honest, the F times D naught, that's also input work, as well as the PR and DI. Those are both input, so it really doesn't make sense to talk about the efficiency at that point. Some of the input works of PR, DI, and F, DO would actually be equal to the frictional losses you have at the interface sort of a energy balance there you could think of. So for lowering, what we're going to do is, uh, first of all, we're going to take the, the force to raise uh, that we had earlier, pushing from right to left. We're going to turn that around, and we're actually going to pull a uh, piece of L as uh, the force to lower. And I call this uh, that we've assumed that it's self-locking for the reasons I'm about to discuss. When you go through and do the static force balance of this with friction at the interface, you actually will get this mechanical advantage once you have that assumption. And when, when friction is high, that means that F is more than tangent of lambda, and that causes the mechanical advantage to be positive. And uh, this actually makes sense because if the friction is high, you'd actually have to pull uh, on on the wedge in the direction that you're trying to displace. So uh, that makes sense that you've got your F and your PL consistent with a positive mechanical advantage. It is instructive to look at this from a standpoint of work into the system. Remember you have the PL being in the same direction as DI, so that's an input work. You also have F and D naught in the same direction, so that's an input work. The sum of those two input works will equal the losses due to friction. On the other hand, when F is low and lower than tangent of lambda, then that would cause the, de the denominator to be negative, and that actually would cause ML to be negative. And that negative ML means that our previous assumption of PL is backwards and that PL is actually the other way. This creates a back drivable system and what that means is that the PL is opposite uh, the direction of DI. If you notice we have the F in the direction of D naught 
and we have PL opposite the direction of DI. So it's, it's back drivable in the sense that you can flip what was the output is now the input. So F and DO being in the same direction. And what was the input is now the output since, since PL is going is opposing the DI. So it's a very interesting way of looking at it, but it's based on a notion of energy balance. Okay, so in real time, I'm going to take a look at um, doing the lowering from my previous SOLIDWORKS motion study. I actually changed the edge-to-edge -edge mate to have the, the pushing face of the wedge, its edge mated with the edge of the nut as my initial condition. So I've, I've swapped that around. Um, it is suppressed in the model. I've created. I took one of the previous models and actually created a new one, and I've labeled it as lowering. Um, in my solid body contact, I want to start with a high friction of 0.2. So I'm going to go and do high friction first, sort of like what we had in our discussion. Okay, so we've got 0 0.2, 0 0.2 there. And I want to make sure my motor is doing the right thing. I actually want to flip the direction of the motor because I want the motor to display. So the motor, you're, you're moving the motor. So that red arrow there is talking about a displacement of the motor. It's not the force of the motor. So I'm going to displace it the 8 inches uh, to the right. So we're moving the input and we're loading the output. Okay, so um, and make sure my force is uh, acting down. Yes, it is. So I think I'm ready here to try that first uh, run. So let's see what happens. Okay, so the nut is falling. That looks good. Okay, so that looked okay. Let's go take a look at our motor force. Show plot. Um, I'm going to go and, and put the SIGN back on this. So instead of magnitude, um, displacing in the X. So I want to look at X component of force there. Okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the plot. Okay, so the force is showing as 1.2, pretty constant as a plus 1.2. Now that is plus being in the positive X direction, 1.2. Uh, plus 1.2, so I'm doing the X component. It's going... And that is in the same direction as we've displaced. So my nut or my wedge is going from left to right. It's displacing positive X. And the force is in the same direction, uh, positive X. Okay, you can get yourself a little bit confused if your wedge is actually going right to left. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. So it's showing a plus 1.2-ish. Um, you know what? Let's put that to put that put that to file and actually fine tune what that is. Um, okay, lower. Okay, so I've called it lower. Let's see. And it looks like. I could go in and do some averaging, but let's grab that as the real thing. And I'm going to go put it in here. Boom. Okay. Um, okay, so I already populated a Excel file with my lambda of 8. I put my friction factor of 0.2 and calculated the M to ML. Um, the lower, me mechanical advantage lower, 
And based on that, I calculated what the force to lower would be, um, assuming the self-locking. And it looks like I'm pretty close. Um, so it looks like it's, it's 0 0.1%, 0 0.2% uh, relative difference. So that's really good. I could say, okay, SOLIDWORKS is going to be, um, the SOLIDWORKS ML is going to be that. Output divided by the simulated input, and again, it's really good um, off by about 0.2 percent. Um, that's really nice. Okay, so let's take this and copy or duplicate. So I'm going to call this uh, lowering with uh, F as 0.05. Okay, that's my only change. Um, gonna go up here to Solid Body Contact, Edit Feature. Change that to 0 0.05, 0 0.05, so this should be back drivable. Let's see what this looks like. And I've got my force configured to show um, X component, so that's good. Okay, let's calculate it. So the red arrow again here is that's you're moving the motor. That's that's uh, that's displacement. Let's go see what the force is. Show plot. Hey, look, look at this. It is negative. Um, negative 1.7 something. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to export it to CSV. It's negative. So this is uh, lower. Uh, it's a back drivable. I'll just call it lower BD. I know it's back drivable. I can see it from the negative force there. And again, you have to remember, uh, I'm, I'm displacing in a positive direction, but the force is negative. So that the, the force of the wedge uh, acting on the wedge is actually pushing right to left while we're backing it out, like we discussed in that uh, PowerPoint. Okay, so let me... Open lower BD, kind of get a feel for what that number is. Um, I'm going to grab that one. I could, again, I could average these, but um, let's grab that. Let me do this quickly. I'm going to plop it right there. Um, okay, and I'm going to take this theory or analytical model, copy, paste it, and put my 0.05 there. So analytically, it should be that. Tell you what, let me let me take that, put it down here. So separate my two runs. Delete. Okay, so the first runs up here. And then my second run, um, put here, boom, and um, delete that. And there's the back drivable version. Fix these things here. Okay, so it looks like 0.1%. Um, I bet if I average those, if I did a little better job of averaging the SOLIDWORKS values, it would have been closer to what the analytical value showed. But that negative value is because the original assumption of uh, self-locking was backwards. Um, and you see it, it's back drivable because the F is lower than the tangent of lambda.
So in summary, when a force acts in the same direction as the displacement, this is input work. When force acts in the opposite direction as the displacement, this is output work. Efficiency only makes sense when you have both the output and the input. Efficiency is output work divided by input work. Of course, you could change work to power if you had uh, velocities instead of displacements. When the mechanical advantage is negative, this means that one of the forces, either the output or the input, is uh, really acting in an opposite direction to what you originally assigned. So anyway, hopefully that helps you navigate some of the sign uh, challenges that we have here in the wedge. Hope you enjoyed it.